Hey, it's Amanda. Welcome to my YouTube series where I'm reviewing some of my most popular posts on Instagram. If you don't know me, I am a NICU nurse of 16 years and a neonatal clinical nurse specialist, and I love to teach and I love to learn. So let's review this together. Today, we're talking about tracheoesophageal fistula or TEF. So what is TEF? TEF is when there's this abnormal connection between the trachea and the esophagus. And there's several different types of TEF. One type is just the esophageal atresia and no fistula in and of itself. So the esophagus actually ends in a blind pouch and there's no connection to the stomach. The most common type is where you have esophageal atresia and there is a distal fistula. And so there is actually a distal fistula from the trachea to the stomach area. And it's quite fascinating, actually. I got super nerdy when I learned about how this happens. And so essentially what happens is early in embryology, the trachea and the esophagus actually start out as one tube. And as that fetus is progressing in their development, it septates into these two separate tubes with the trachea and the esophagus. And when this occurs, there is risk for there to be a fistula left behind, which connects those two tubes. So like I mentioned, the most common is type C, where you have the blind pouch from the esophagus, so uh, esophageal atresia, and a distal tracheoesophageal fistula. So what might you see if you're caring for a patient who has this? Well, you can see coughing, choking, and cyanosis, because when you think about this esophageal atresia, there's, it's a blind pouch. There's nowhere for all those secretions to go. The baby can't just swallow them into their stomach like they typically would. And so they can easily become overwhelmed by just the secretions themselves. And even more so if we try and feed the baby, the baby can definitely become cyanotic with feeds. They'll have increased respiratory distress. And like I mentioned, this excessive salivation and drooling because there's nowhere for it to go. Other things we might see is respiratory distress and abdominal distress extension because there's air getting into the stomach from the fistula, but there it can't really escape. So the belly can get somewhat distended. Another thing that you might see when you're caring for that patient is on x-ray, you'll see this OG tube that is coiled up really high, but then there's gas patterns in the stomach and the bowels. So that tells you the gas is getting there somehow. The fact that the OG tube is coiled can make you concerned that there could be a type C TEF in esophageal atresia. The other thing you should think about with these types of patients is, are there any other anomalies? So babies with TEF can have what's known as vactral association. So when there's other types of issues or other types of anomalies going on, vactral stands for vertebral anomalies, anal atresia, cardiac defects, TEF or tracheoesophageal fistula, renal anomalies and limb anomalies. So it's important that these babies get a full workup from an echo, a renal ultrasound, spinal imaging, and maybe even genetic consults. What are we gonna do when we're caring for this baby that might have TEF? Well, they're gonna be NPO. We're not gonna feed them if they're getting overwhelmed just by their secretions alone. We'll start IV fluids. We're gonna place a Rapogel tube to evacuate all of those secretions and help that baby so that they can manage them a little bit better. We can put the baby on their belly and elevate the head of the bed to reduce the amount of refluxing up the fistula towards the lungs. And then we'll also monitor for signs of any kind of aspiration pneumonia and overall their respiratory status. This condition is repaired surgically. So the goal is to close the fistula and reconnect the esophagus where it's supposed to go. Most repairs are done within the first few days of life, depending on that baby's overall stability and any other anomalies that's going on with that baby. Postoperatively, we want to look out for the baby's respiratory support needs. We want to make sure that if there's an or a gastric tube in place, it was placed surgically and it cannot come out. So make sure that everybody is aware that it's a surgically placed tube. Also ensuring that we're not deep suctioning because we're worried about a leak or a stricture at that reanastomosis, so where they reconnected the esophagus. Oftentimes the baby will remain MPO for a few 
days to weeks to monitor for any kind of leakage at the reanastomosis site. So the baby will require TPN, total parental nutrition, and long-term IV access until they're able to feed enterally. So to wrap up, tracheoesophageal fistula is a high risk but highly manageable condition when recognized early. We want to make sure that we know the signs of a tracheoesophageal fistula and know how to act when we have a baby with that. This requires close collaboration with both the NICU nurses and doctors and nurse practitioners, as well as our colleagues from the surgical team and radiology teams when we're caring for this baby. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to check out the next one. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the five most common medications that we give in the NICU and why we give them. I hope to see you there. Bye.